Hi, my name is Enrique Vasquez, and thank you for visiting with me for this introductory overview on programmable logic controllers. I'm an electrical engineer specializing in industrial controls and automation. I've been at it for about 15 years, primarily working on capital project installations for chemical plants, vehicle test facilities, industrial HVAC, and food packaging systems. I've also consulted as a power controls and instrumentation engineer on projects to develop prototypes for technologies in the plasma treatment of powders, alternative fuels and additives, seed counting and sorting, and hybrid vehicle power systems. More recently, I've expanded into joint venturing and crowdfunding on projects to develop automation systems for green energy technologies. In this presentation, I attempt to answer the following questions for those interested in PLCs and what they do. Number one, what is a PLC? Two, what are the different PLC components? Three, what is a ladder logic? And four, how does ladder logic work? Due to the complexity of PLCs and ladder logic, only the basic operation and programming will be discussed. The Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC, is the workhorse of industrial production processes. A PLC is a solid-state, user-programmable control system with functions to control logic, sequencing, timing, arithmetic data manipulation and counting capabilities for automating controls on electrical machinery in factories, lighting and HVAC for industrial facilities, and operator controls for commercial vehicles and even amusement park rides. A PLC can be viewed as an industrial computer that has a central processor unit, memory, input-output interface, and a programming device. It accepts data, status information, and various sensing devices like limit switches, proximity switches, executes the control program stored in the memory, and gives appropriate output commands to devices such as solenoid valves, switches, etc. The input-output interface is the communication link between field devices and the controllers. Through these interfaces, the processor can sense and measure physical quantities regarding a machine or process, such as proximity, position, motion, level, temperature, pressure, etc. Based on the status sensed, the CPU issues commands to output devices such as valves, motors, alarms, and so on. A programmer unit is used to enter the application program, which often uses a simple user-friendly logic. PLCs are well adapted to a range of automation tasks. These are typically industrial processes and manufacturing, where the cost of developing and maintaining the automation system is high relative to the total cost of the automation, and where changes to the system would be expected during its operational life. PLCs contain input and output devices compatible with industrial pilot devices and controls. Little electrical design is required, and the design problem centers on expressing the desired sequence of operations. PLC applications are typically highly customized systems, so the cost of a packaged PLC is low compared to the cost of a specific custom-built controller design. PLCs run on real-time operating systems which respond to input conditions within rigidly defined intervals to ensure that the intended operation will always result. Their hardware is ruggedized to reliably operate within a wide temperature range, shielded against electrical noise, and resistant to vibration and impact. Examples of production processes that are controlled using PLCs include metal machining sequences, product assembly lines, and batch chemical processes. Logical control has been used to control sequences of actions in automatic manufacturing systems for many years. Before the advent of solid-state logic circuits, logical control systems were hardwired using electromechanical relays, cam timers, and logical sequencers, and these were interconnected using wires inside the control panel. In some cases, a control panel covered an entire wall. These relays would be individually wired together in a manner that would yield the desired outcome.
Once a hardwired logic system had been constructed, the process for updating these facilities for another type of product was very time consuming and expensive. When production requirements changed, so did the control system. Electricians had to manually rewire hundreds or even thousands of separate components for the new application. It restricted the production scheduling of a factory and made changing of products difficult. This becomes very expensive when the change is frequent. On top of everything, the life cycle of relay contacts was limited because of the multitude of moving parts, so some relays had to be replaced, adding to the already overtaxed maintenance schedules. If replacement was required, production had to be stopped as well. Also, it could happen that there was not enough room for necessary changes. A control panel was used only for one particular process, and it wasn't easy to adapt to the requirements of a new system. As far as maintenance, electricians had to be very skillful in finding errors. In short, conventional control panels proved to be very inflexible. A typical example of conventional control panel is shown in this picture. You can see here a large number of electrical wires, relays, timers, and other elements of automation typical for that period. So in the late 60s, General Motors Automatic Transmission Division, Hydromatic, put out a request for proposals to design an electronic replacement for hardwired relay systems based on a white paper written by engineer Edward R. Clark. The purpose of a PLC was to directly replace electromechanical relays as logic elements, substituting instead a solid-state digital computer with a stored program, able to emulate the interconnection of many relays to perform certain logical tasks. The PLC provided an easy way to reprogram the wiring rather than actually rewiring the control system. We can actually consider a PLC to be a box full of hundreds or thousands of separate relays, counters, timers, and data storage locations. They don't physically exist, but rather they are simulated and can be considered software counters, timers, and so on. A PLC has many input terminals through which it interprets high and low logical states from sensors and switches. It also has many output terminals through which it outputs high and low signals to power lights, solenoids, contactors, small motors, and other devices lending themselves to on-off control. Fit into a control cabinet, a PLC takes up little room, especially considering the equivalent space that would be needed by electromechanical relays to perform the same functions. The advantages of a control panel that is based on a PLC controller could be summed up in a few basic points. Number one, compared to a conventional process control system, the number of wires needed for connections is reduced by approximately 80%. Second, the diagnostic functions of a PLC controller allow for fast and easy error detection. Third, changes in operating sequence or application of a PLC controller to a different operating process can be easily accomplished by replacing the program through a console or using PC software, not requiring changes in wiring unless addition of some input or output device is required. Fourth, it requires fewer spare parts. Five, it is much cheaper compared to a conventional system, especially in cases where a large number of input and output instruments are needed and when operational functions are complex. Number six, the reliability of a PLC is greater than that of an electromechanical relay or timer because of fewer moving parts. Seven, they are compact and occupy less space. And finally, the use of PLCs results in appreciable savings in hardware and wiring. One advantage of PLCs that simply cannot be duplicated by electromechanical relays is remote monitoring and control via digital computer networks.
Because a PLC is essentially a special purpose digital computer, it has the ability to communicate with other computers rather easily. The first PLCs that were developed during the 70s were not very easy to program. The language was cumbersome to write and required highly trained programmers. These early devices were merely relay replacements and could do very little else. The PLC at first gradually and in recent years rapidly developed into a sophisticated and highly versatile control system component. It was also a time for reducing the size of the PLC as reliable microprocessors with cheap memory and flexible input-output features became available. Today, the microcomputer-based PLC is a robust, reliable instrument with many functions and features. Units today are capable of performing complex math functions, including numerical integration and differentiation, and operate at the fast microprocessor speeds now available. Even cheap PLCs are able to control a medium-scale automatic machining station or chemical batch reactor. Large PLC systems are capable of running an entire factory automation system. The functionality of the PLC has evolved over the years to include sequential relay control, motion control, process control, distributed control systems, and networking. Older PLCs were capable of only handling discrete inputs and outputs, that is, on-off type signals, while today's systems can accept and generate analog voltages and currents, as well as a wide range of voltage levels and pulsed signals. PLCs are also designed to be rugged. Unlike their personal computer cousin, they can typically withstand vibration, shock, elevated temperatures, and electrical noise to which manufacturing equipment is exposed. Early PLCs were designed to replace relay logic systems. These PLCs were programmed in ladder logic, which strongly resembles a schematic diagram of relay logic. This program notation was chosen to reduce training demands for the existing technicians, since it was a familiar format used for electromechanical control panels. Another reason for this is that PLCs solve the logic in a predictable and repeating sequence, and ladder logic allows the programmer to see any issues with the timing of the logic sequence more easily than would be possible in other formats. As PLCs have become more sophisticated, it is sometimes difficult to put all their features into a ladder logic framework, and so alternative programming languages are becoming more widely used. At this time, however, ladder logic is still the standard way to describe a PLC program. The actual logic of the control system is established inside the PLC by means of a computer program. This program dictates which output gets energized under which input conditions. Although the program itself appears to be a ladder logic diagram with switch and relay symbols, there are no actual switch contacts or relay coils operating inside the PLC to create the logical relationships between input and output. The program is entered and viewed via a personal computer connected to the PLC's programming port. The programming unit is used to build, test, and edit the logical sequence that the PLC will execute. Equally important to understand is that the personal computer used to display and edit the PLC's program is not necessary for the PLC's continued operation. Once a program has been loaded to the PLC from the personal computer, the personal computer may be unplugged from the PLC and the PLC will continue to follow the programmed commands. There are many logic symbols available in ladder logic, including timers, counters, math and data moves such that any logical condition or control loop can be represented in ladder logic. With just a handful of basic symbols such as normally open contact, normally closed contact, normally open coil, normally closed coil, timers and counters, most logical conditions can be represented. One of the advantages of implementing logical control in software rather than in hardware is that input signals can be reused as many times in the program as is necessary. 
Using a PLC, we can program as many contacts as we wish for each input without adding additional hardware, since each input and each output is nothing more than a single bit in the PLC's digital memory, either 0 or 1, and can be recalled as many times as necessary. Furthermore, since each output in a PLC is nothing more than a bit in its memory as well, we can assign contacts in a PLC program actuated by an output status. As computers, PLCs can perform timing functions for the equivalent of time delay relays, drum sequencing, and other advanced functions with far greater accuracy and reliability than what are possible using electromechanical logic devices. A PLC works by continually scanning a program. It basically scans each ladder rung individually in the entire ladder logic program, updating the outputs on that rung after scanning through the inputs. A PLC program is generally executed repeatedly as long as the controlled system is running. The status of physical input points is copied to an area of memory accessible to the processor, sometimes called the I.O. image table. The program is then run from its first instruction down to the last rung. It takes some time for the processor of the PLC to evaluate all the rungs and update the I.O. image table with the status of the outputs. The scan time may be a few milliseconds for a small program or on a fast processor, but older PLCs running very large programs can take much longer, say up to 100 milliseconds, to execute the program. If the scan time was too long, the response of the PLC to process conditions would be too slow to be useful. As PLCs became more advanced, methods were developed to change the sequence of ladder execution, and subroutines were implemented. This simplified programming could be used to save scan time for high-speed processes. For example, parts of the program used only for setting up the machine could be segregated from those parts required to operate at higher speed. Special purpose I.O. modules, such as timer modules or counter modules like encoders, can be used where the scan time of the processor is too long to reliably pick up. For example, counting pulses and interpreting quadrature from a shaft encoder. The relatively slow PLC can still interpret the counted values to control the machine, but the accumulation of pulses is done by a dedicated module that is unaffected by the speed of the program execution. There's so much more about PLCs that we could cover, so be sure to check back for more. I hope that this information has been useful for you, especially if you are considering the possibility of automating your own controls. Please feel free to contact me if you would like to discuss any specific needs. If you would do me one last favor, please leave a comment to let me know that you saw this presentation. Thanks, and have a nice day.